So ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you into Rishi's man cave. Do note that the animal is at work. Uh, let me show you. This is Rishi's Mount Everest of clothes. Hey, excuse me, excuse me. Why don't you tell them that half of these clothes are yours? And what about the receipts from 1983? Uh, I was born in 84, so that doesn't make sense. And the ball from your failed World Cup career? Uh, I, like, I like to let you know that people call me Messi. Hmm? Yeah, you look very messy also. Lionel Messi lah. Okay, no, I, I understand, okay? You're, you, you want me to declutter, I get it. I, I need to do it, yeah. Alright, can you please spark joy in my life for the first time? We are Rishi and Charo, two stand-up comics who just happen to be married to each other. Comedy and tragedy. The business of being funny means keeping up with trends. Where every day, there's a new way for us to feel better. Live better. Think better. And be better. Why are they even a thing? And do they even work? Well, don't knock it till you've tried it. A best-selling book and a hit TV show. Inspiring hundreds and thousands of social media posts. Hashtag decluttering. Organising consultant Marie Kondo has made getting rid of things a real big thing. That's right. And according to Google Trends, Singapore is the country most interested in the term Marie Kondo. But what is decluttering really? I mean, is it just a fancy term for cleaning up? To find out more, I got in touch with a professional declutterer who's going to sort out Rishi's mess. <laughs> what mess? San, welcome. Uh, so, I think this is not too bad, right? What do you think? Yeah, I agree. It's really not too bad. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, you are 4 to 5. I pass, see, I pass. What? I mean, look at this chair. Like, I, I put this rocking chair here so I could actually enjoy the view, but now I'm just enjoying the laundry. Well, at least it's clean laundry. Yes, it is. And half of it is hers, by the way. You know, like, every year, mm -hmm. according to Asian culture, we do spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between spring cleaning and decluttering? So when you clean, you're just dusting off an item, right? Making sure that it's clean. But when you declutter, it's about rationalising what you have and make sure the things that you have suit your lifestyle. Question. Mm -hmm. What does a professional declutterer do? The correct term to use is professional organiser. Professional organiser. Because you don't just declutter. The key is to get it organised so that it's easy for you to see at one glance You know what you have and can take it out, put it back easily. You know, son, we watched uh, this episode of uh, Marie Kondo uh, yeah. the other day and I got a bit inspired. I did, right? A little bit? Very little. <laughs> Has that TV series of Marie Kondo helped you get more inquiries, more calls, more business in Singapore? Or is it just a fad where people are, you know, just doing it for the Instagram likes and stuff? Well, it's definitely created this awareness that there is a service that helps to declutter and organise. And how, how different is it in Singapore, decluttering? The average American household size is about 2,500 square feet. In Singapore, that's 1,000 square feet. Mm. So therefore lies the challenge of managing the space and managing the items that we have. You know, I need to manage some things, but um, i leave you both at, uh, to it and mm. I'll come back and check the progress. So enjoy yourselves. Okay, okay we will. Thank All right. You. Thank you. <laughs> she says okay. that this is my big sty. Uh, I think I need you to unpick it or unsty it. Okay. So tell me, what do you want this area to serve as? What kind of activities do you do? Oh, this is just my work desk, actually. I just got like, yeah, I mean, 90% of the time I'm working here. All right, so we'll start by sorting all of the items that are on the table and putting them into category. Okay. I've got two deodorant sticks. I, I just, uh, I'm a stickler for personal hygiene. This is finished, so I'm going to okay. throw this. Right. <gasps> Good. Wow, it That's feels good, good. man. <laughs> Does this belong in the desk? It belongs in my heart. Mm, you do have a lot of pairs of sunglasses. Yeah, you know why? Because I'm a very guarded person. I don't like people to peer into my eyes too much. It's a very emotional process. Yes, it is. You can't see it, but I'm crying behind these sunglasses. <laughs> and this one? Uh, this is actually uh, my comedy notebook. Let me read you a good, a good joke from my comedy notebook. Uh, it says here, Singapore 
has a lion, why does Indonesia have cat? This is a joke that I don't use because it's not funny. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, great. Right. Uh, does it look like uh, what I think it is? It's definitely not what you think it is. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a headband. It's a headband I use when I travel. Hey, great! That goes with. The... It's got the smell of my travels. Uh... <laughs> what is this? Oh, oh, okay. I know what this is. Someone threw this onto my balcony. One of my neighbors on top because I found it on my balcony okay. and I took a picture of it and I kept it to go and like complain like, hey, people are throwing stuff from on top but I forgot to do it. Do you need that anymore? Bye-bye. Uh... All right. The reason I left Rishi and Son was because I had been invited to the home of Bonnie and Clifton. Like thousands of Singaporeans, the young couple had been bitten by the decluttering bug. Your house is so clean and tidy. Where are all your things? I actually went through a decluttering um, phase uh, about, about a year ago. And uh, it was after reading a book uh, by Mary Kondo. And then like one night, like this overwhelming sense of like- possessed. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it was like this urgency that I felt to just like go in my closet and just declutter everything. So Clifton, how was the decluttering process for you? I guess for me, it was a, it was a more drawn-up process. Mm -hmm. So it was a gradual process of you know, slowly like taking out certain pieces of clothing or articles and stuff like that. And then over time, you realise that, hey, actually, I could live without them. And you, you slowly start to get used to the fact that I have lesser things and it's fine. Do you think that decluttering is um, trending in Singapore? I think there's generally more awareness. It's a Netflix effect. So once like Marie Kondo went on, the awareness just exploded. But whether they take the next step to like yeah. initiating that, that change in lifestyle, it probably has to come from you know, a conscious decision. I feel that like our lives here in Singapore are really busy and it's just really nice to come back to a home where it's like very calm and there's a sense of happiness because it gives us space to do the things we love. So, ta-da! We're done sorting! This looks good. This looks, looks good. It feels right? good. More importantly, it feels good. So the next step is to organize whatever that we have sorted. Mm -hmm. So you will have easy access to it. You can take it out in under 10 seconds. Put it back. Ah. Hey. That looks so, good. What do you think? I've seen worse. Yeah, it's not that bad, right? Yeah, it isn't. But uh, do you wear all of them? Yeah, but well, not all at once. You can definitely do something about this. Huh? Oh boy. <sighs> okay. So this is a lot of my uh, stuff that's out here now. Usually, Sun declutters with her clients, but since I wanted to try it, she gave me a list of things to do, alone. But she's going to be back, just to make sure that I'm on track. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. This, this looks like hooks. I do have something that I never saw in my life, or rather I haven't seen in a year. Like, I got these things when we first moved in, thinking we would use it, but then my wife was saying like, why are you buying so much junk from China? So I just hid it in my closet. Carry on with this, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I got I to dump this guy. This, 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 this boy has served his purpose. He's been to hell and back. Good memories with this, right? I mean, don't, don't pretend like you don't have memories with your underwear, guys. Come on, even you feel nostalgic about what you wear. I do feel a little bit of pressure because I know the teacher is going to come and check later and if, I've, if she saw me with X amount of stuff and when she comes back, there's still X amount of stuff and not X minus Y amount of stuff, I, I'm afraid she's going to think I'm a failure. I'm like, Rishi, what's wrong with you? Why we couldn't get rid of it? Yeah? So, sorting. 
After meeting Bonnie and Clifton, I did a little research on minimalism and came across Fumio Sasaki, one of Japan's most famous minimalists. He went from living in a cluttered apartment to a 215 square foot space with about 150 items, claiming to have gained true freedom after letting go of his clutter. Inspired, I decided to pick 150 items, paste stickers on them, and these are the only items I can use for the next five days. I wanted to know, what will living with less feel like? So as you can see, I have all this makeup, but I only chose six, so that's all I can use, which is gonna be a bit weird. Can't live without my phone and laptop. So far, definitely. So I'm, I'm done with the last five items uh, and I realised I really missed out a hairdryer and hairbrush so for the next five days I'm going to have bad hair day. But I think that 150 items for five days is quite manageable. Let me try it out. One day later and Rishi is just about done with sorting. Wow. Yo. Looks good. You've organised it decent and finally I can at least have some space to read a book on the rocking chair that was meant to sit down and rock. Well, are you seriously complimenting me or are you...? Semi. Like, I'm happy to see this but I'm also a bit worried. Will you be able to sustain this or not? It's been a bit difficult to figure out what to throw, I think. That's been the most challenging stuff. How's your minimalism thing going? Eh? I think I'm figuring it out. Like 150 things are actually a lot of things. Mm. I might do this well. I'll be okay. Good luck. I'm taking a well-deserved break from decluttering and I head to town. Not to shop for new underwear, but to speak to psychologist Geraldine Tan. Cheryl raised an interesting point about sustaining my cleanup effort. Thank you so much, man. Why is decluttering sometimes so hard to start, let alone sustain? So Geraldine, thanks a lot for seeing me. I am actually on a journey of decluttering right now. I've only just begun, uh, but it's beginning to be a bit overwhelming. What do you mean by overwhelming? I just feel like there's a lot to do. Was it that your clutter was too much for you to bear? Have you thrown anything away? Yes, I have thrown some things away. I, I think, yeah. How much things have you thrown away? Not a lot. To move things around is simpler. But now you're at a stage where I need to take and throw things away. So that's where you go, huh? And you're stuck. Is it normal though for people to have uh, attachment issues? Yes. So a lot of times when we look through a pile, right, suddenly we're triggered by memories. Even the tiniest things like receipts or cinema stuff, right? And you look at it, oh yeah, this is the, when we went with this person and that person. Should I really throw it away or not? Mm. I never thought of it that way, like memorabilia. Mm. I actually want to continue this mm. journey. Okay. Uh, any final mental tips you can share with me? So imagine like you're a backpack, right? And along the journey, you collect things and you don't throw away anything then your back gets heavier and heavier and heavier. So sometimes when you look into your backpack and start asking yourself, do I really need all these? Do I need all this weight? And you start throwing away, you feel lighter. Mm. It's good to have those memories, good to have them, but you know, it's, it's um, good to just keep them as memories. I don't need to physically hold on to them. Thank you, girl. You're wonderful. No worries. You've actually uh, inspired me to give me a bit more of a catalyst. To I'm as good complete. as Marie Kondo. Yay! Well, you look a bit like her, so that's a positive thing, you know. Uh, Meeting with Geraldine has helped to clarify some of the doubts I've been having about decluttering, and weirdly enough, I feel I'm now ready to go home and throw some of my old underwear out. If we weren't doing this show, I doubt Rishi would have started decluttering. So what made others start? And what made them seek the help of professional organisers? Thanks for having me. This no is problem. Evelyn, a mother of two. She has engaged a professional organiser, Nat, to help her declutter her house. Hi, Nat. Hey, hi, Cheryl. How are you? Good, and you? Good, good, good. Please, come in. 
Okay, so this is the room that uh, I want to work on today. So um, it's supposed to be a children's room. All right, so this is how it's going to work. Basically, we're going to take um, the items in this room. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them in categories. Okay. Then we'll go each category and do some purging. Okay. And once we have purged, we will look at how to organize uh, each item. Okay. 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 When did you realize that you actually want a, a professional organizer to come in and help you declutter? As a mom of two children, I was focused on my children for some time and things started piling up. When I do it on my own, um, you know, I only have so much time and I always get stuck. You can't find things at the right time and then it affects your mood. Mm -hmm. and, and you have more clients like Evelyn? I do have more and more, uh, I believe, of young Singaporean couples mm -hmm. who also want to simplify their life. I think beyond the impact on the physical space, it's really to see the transformation that happens in individuals and also their families that really uh, drive me. I feel so happy to be part of this relationship, although I feel like the third wheel, but, uh, no. uh, but I think like I, I kind of help. Extra hands is always good. Well, thanks for well. helping us. After helping Evelyn and Nat, I came to understand why decluttering is more than your run-of-the-mill annual spring cleaning. The process was more structured and took us hours, but I think the payoff was well worth it. The day is finally here. It is now the moment of truth. There is less things distracting the eye. I would say it's quite a close to, but let's look into one of the details. Okay. I see you've done sort of Improvising. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just look through the rest. Oh, okay. Ah, this. Oh, busted! There is no compartments inside here. Actually, I didn't know what to put in there, ah. so I just dumped like the charger and the iPad and the plug and the seat and the money I owe traffic police and for parking fines. Letter. Paid ready. Paid ready. Paid ready. Okay. And the last one? Oh. <laughs> Oh boy! So is, is this like a rank from good to bad? <laughs> Don't hit me with your decluttering textbook, please. No, okay. it's part of the process. Yes. Yeah. No, you're right. I have not properly compartmentalized that last drawer. Okay, let's have a look at the wardrobe. Okay. I can't wait to see what's inside. You remember what it was like when you first saw it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right. Ah. It is so different from how it was. It is, yeah. Can I open the door? You can. I can't even remember what's in them. Ties. The secrets are being unraveled slowly. More socks. But shouldn't you put these socks together? Oh boy. Don't they feel lonely when they are separated with their family members? Never do homework properly, Rishi. <laughs> Open the cave. Ah. And then push it flat in. Yep. There you go. I feel like I'm on the right track. Yes, you are. And all I think you need to do is really spend about five minutes mm. every day trying to, you know, make all the finer details, relocate some of the items, mm. fold it better. And I think you should be perfect. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I, and I look forward to showing you the hopefully near perfect <laughs> finished product. I look forward yeah. to it. Thanks, thanks, son. I am coming to the end of my 150 items challenge. For the past four days, I used only these items with stickers on them. 
Luckily, the stuff that my makeup artist owns doesn't count. So, my makeup artist just left because I'm filming later on. And that's why I look like this. If not, I only picked these six items, which is okay in daily life, but because I'm in the media industry, technically, I can't survive without this. Makeup aside, living with just 150 items was surprisingly okay. It made me realize I actually own a lot of things that I didn't need. So, how did I end up buying and accumulating so much stuff? To find out, I met with Dr. Jimmy Wong, an expert in consumer psychology. So Jimmy, I'm, I'm actually in the midst of doing the 150 items challenge. So um, as I was picking up the items, I realized that I have a lot of items that I didn't actually need. And I don't know why I picked it up. I don't know why I bought it. As we move through, you know, different phases of our life, we will get clothing, material entities to kind of represent who we are. So because of that, you will accumulate a lot of things. So, you know, it, it, don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, it's so, normal. Are there specific reasons why people actually impulse buy? Well, I think impulsive buying is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I will compliment you that you have a passion for life. Okay. okay? Just don't get, you know, overboard with that. Because okay. it can turn into what you call shopaholism. Okay. okay. So, in fact, a lot of times marketers do create a shopping environment to make you feel impulsive. Scent in a shop can make you impulsive to arouse you emotionally and when you see something that connects with your childhood, you're going to just buy it, just like that. Do you observe any like shopping trends in Singapore? We are, you know, a garden city after all. The minute you mention city, then there is that corporate game in which everyone is pursuing. So in that kind of environment, people do buy stuff to represent who they are. But if they belong to the, the other group, which is, you know, tend to lean more towards being minimalistic, then they will buy less stuff because they care less about what people think of them, right? Okay. So if you want to be successful in this, you know, minimalistic challenge you've undertaken, then think about that, you know. Try to suppress the need to conform to what you feel other people think of you. So I'm really going to discipline myself and make sure that I don't do so much of impulse buying. Thank you so much, Jimmy, for being here with us today. Well, that's it. I've decluttered. And I've lived the life of a minimalist. It wasn't easy getting here, but I'm so glad I did it, you know. Having a professional like San on board, I think it really helped kickstart me on this journey. Yeah. I mean, I know it's weird using the word journey, but it really has been, you know, it's been a bit emotional. It's been a bit uh, therapeutic, a bit cathartic. Mm. And it's almost as though this physical change that I've done in the office has given me some kind of mental clarity as well. Absolutely, like even meeting, um, I met some professionals as well who, mm. who taught me that I don't need to actually buy so many things. Like I have to be, I have to make sure that they are, I don't waste resources mm. um, and also choosing the things that I want and the things that I don't want, it's okay to give them away. Yeah, and I'm just so glad that we did this, you know. But could we do um, the decluttering thing with the whole house? Because you did such a good job with the room, so I think you should work on the whole house now. Baby steps, Cheryl. Baby steps. Do the whole house. In the next episode of Rishi and Cheryl Try, Cheryl gets separation anxiety. Today is the last day that I can actually use all my devices. I'm pretty nervous. As you can see, this is really hardcore. <laughs> While Rishi oh, finds Zen. Yeah. I was a crow for half a second. <laughs> As we go on a digital detox.